Well, welcome to election time, where we literally count down to the November 1st local government elections. Tonight, on election time on Prime, we focus on the Makana local municipality. A little bit more about the Makana municipality. It governs the town of Makanda, previously known as Grahamstown, and surrounding areas of the Eastern Cape province, and forms part of the Sara Bartman district municipality. The council consists of 27 members elected by mixed-member proportional representation. 14 councillors are elected by first-past-the-post voting in 14 wards, while the remaining 19 are chosen from party lists. In 2014, the council was placed under administration by the courts for three months because of its financial instability and inability to provide basic services. The Makana High Court made legal history by ordering the Makana Municipal Council to be dissolved. The court ruled that ongoing failure to provide services to residents was unconstitutional. Well, as we do every time we have this conversation on election time, each candidate will be given two minutes to make a case for why voters should consider them in the upcoming local government elections and trust them with their vote. Of course, after two minutes, your time will be up, and I will ask you to wrap up. We will then follow uh, the conversation up with a couple of questions in the end. All the delegates will be asked to give a wrap in one minute. Well, to today's show, we feature the DA's Kevin Mileham, the EFF's Siam Tanda Gyanki, and the ANC's Rami Kong. And all of them are joining us on the virtual line. Good evening to all of you and thank you so much for your time. We'll kick it off with the opening statements and perhaps an opportunity for you to tell the residents of Makana why you deserve their vote on the 1st of November. Uh, Mike, given, uh, or rather Kevin, rather, uh, given the order that we see on our screens, I'll begin with you. Over to you, Kevin. Your two minutes starts now. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say I'm not a candidate. I'm the constituency MP for the DA for Makana, um, and I'm representing the DA. So we know that Makana is in a crisis, that the municipality is completely dysfunctional. The question is, what do we do about it? And so the DA has on several occasions asked for the municipality to be placed under administration. We've also asked for it to be dissolved. We know that the audit reports are shocking. And we are, we are campaigning on our track record of good governance. We are campaigning on the basis that the DA gets things done where we govern. And it's not just us saying that. It's the Auditor General who, in his report, says every year that DA municipalities provide better financial reporting than any other municipalities. It's Stats SA who, in the non-financial census of municipalities, say that the DA-run municipalities provide the best basket of services to the indigent and to residents. It's uh, News24. Uh, News who in their out of order index, which was published last week, indicated that DA municipalities are the top run municipalities in the country. And it's Ratings Africa, who consistently ranked DA municipalities as the best run in the country. And we're saying, give us a chance to show what we can do in Makana. In Makana, we have huge problems with water. We have problems with roads. We have problems with street lighting. We have problems with sanitation. We have problems with uh, solid waste management, landfill management. And all of these have been issues that have been before the courts. There have been, there have been criminal cases opened and criminal charges laid against the mayor and the municipal manager um, by us and by others. And so we believe that these are issues that we can bring our expertise and our knowledge and our skill to the table to, to resolve and to make life better for the residents of Makana. Just last week, I was in Alistair, one of the, the little towns that uh, falls under the Makana municipality. They get water every second day. And the municipality has connected them to the dam by irrigation pipes that leak. So every couple of meters, there's, there's leaks going All out, right, of the, Kevin, out of the pipes. All right, your two minutes yep. is up. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to have to wrap you there. Let me move over then uh, to the ANC's Rami Konga. Uh, Mr. Konga, the floor is yours. Good evening, everybody. Uh, from my side, I want to start with the, with the roads, why the voters must vote for us. Currently, the municipality on, on roads upgrading, we've already spent 274.5 million. At Ripic East, we've got a, we've spent 3 million. That project has already been uh, finished. The, we've got a Name Street paving where we are, um, we are using 21.7 million. That currently it's under construction. 
Then on CBD roads, currently we are spending 17.8 million. That is four streets are being uh, resurfaced in, in, in town. Then we've got the, currently the project that we're implementing that costs 167 million. That is between Makanda and Port Alfred. That is under construction. Then the Makanda taxi routes. Now we are just waiting to sign the service level agreement where we're going to spend 45 million. That covers the 274 million that we're spending on roads de development. Then if we go to sewer upgrades, on Alistair, we've, got, we've spent 16 million, and that project has, has been finished, completed. That is the Alistair sewer upgrade regulation. Wachenuk bulk outfall sewer, we've spent 20, 26 million. That project is completed. Then on Alistair bulk upgrade from Transrefill, we've spent 15 million. That project is com completed. Now, the upgrade of Mayfield bulk sewer outfall, we've spent 22.6 million, that is under construction. Then the Makana bulk sewer phase two, we're spending 15 million, and that is currently under construction as we speak. So on sewer upgrading, was are was, was spending 128 million. Then if we go All right, to water, Mr. Rami, your two minutes is up. Unfortunately, you only have two minutes to make that opening statement. Let me come over uh, to the EFF's representative, Siam Tanda Kyanki. Siam Tanda, the floor is yours. Your two minutes starts now. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's watching at home. Now, when we're talking about Makana, this is a municipality that has failed its citizens. This is a municipality that is failing to account to the residents about the monies that were injected to it to improve Ubo Mbabashali Basekhini. Kwasila Gomas, Gomas Pala wase Makana, Sila Gomas Pala, Ola Sheke Ne Mali, 850,000. That was meant to install it EFC, Ema Papamane, Ema Zulane, Ema Tembeni. Emma Papamani, Emma Zulani, Emma Tembeni. Now, people must vote for the for the EFF because the EFF is a corrupt free government that will that will turn our municipalities to be independent. That will that will provide um, a municipality that is tender free. We, the EFF will abolish tenders. The EFF will advocate and make sure the workers, the security men. The cleaners, they are insourced by a municipality. When we are talking about an EFF free, uh, free corrupt municipality, we are, not, we are talking about a municipality that instead of promising Abashali to build 24 million facilities, but the, the ANC is building less than the money they were given, the EFF will account and hold public meetings to the residents of Makana, who account about the service delivery implementation plans that we promised to deliver on. When we're talking about the EFF, we're talking about a municipality that will come with programs, programs that will develop young people to, to, be, to, to, to be equipped, to be able to get um, to get into programs that will give them skills, skills that they will be able to use to get money to put food on the table. We are talking about a municipality uh, that will be able to use all the six, the farms that are under Makana. Those farms, they will be able to be supported. Where community members will be able to sustain themselves using the land that they own, using the land that they live in. All we right, Sam Tanda, unfortunately, your two minutes is also up. So all of the candidates having an opportunity, at least representing different parties in this conversation, having an opportunity to tell voters why they should consider their parties in terms of the vote on the November 1st. When we come up, we dig a little bit deeper into some of the service delivery issues that are being faced by this municipality and also uh, try to understand what is the plan what is the plan that each of these parties is offering? The people of Makana, of course, one of their biggest challenges is the supply of water. And we've seen residents have to take matters into their own hands. Where were the political parties when residents were coalescing to form these independent forums that have taken these matters to court? We'll find out after this quick break.
You're live on election time on Prime, and tonight we're focusing on the Makana local municipality. We have the DA's Kevin Malham, who's representing his organization, the EFF's Siamtanda Gyanki, and the ANC's Rami Nonga. Uh, let me continue the conversation with all of you then tonight. So Makana has faced major service delivery challenges, which has, as I was mentioning before the break, resulted in residents by and large coming together and challenging some of these failures in uh, the courts and forcing the municipality to, in some instances, take over the running of their services or forcing them to actually deliver on the services that they have not been delivering on. Where does that leave political organizations? Because by and large, political parties have not been leading um, these processes that residents have taken into their own hands. Uh, Kevin, let me begin with you. Well, I think that the, the blame needs to be laid firmly at the feet of the ANC and of the municipal administration. We have a dysfunctional municipal administration led by a dysfunctional ruling party. And every time that concrete proposals are put on the table, they are dismissed out of hand, they are ignored, they are rejected. And uh, so I think the blame needs to be put firmly at their feet. Now, I heard the um, councillor Kona say that... Uh, he spent 16 million rand repairing the sewerage lines at, at Alistair. Let me tell you, if you go to Alistair right now, the sewerage is flowing down the main road and into the Bushman's River. Right now. I was there last week. And so his, his, his wanted uh, upgrades are not working. So the, the, the question you have to ask is, how much space are other political parties being afforded when the ruling party shuts the door on them? when the ruling party ignores them, when municipal officials jump at the orders of the, uh, of the ANC. That's the real problem. Sure. And there's no accountability. Yeah. There is absolutely mm -hmm. no uh, opportunity for oppositions to hold the municipal manager or the directors or the responsible councillors to account when every time they try to do so, it gets rejected by the speaker. So, so the Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin yeah. I think we're talking about two different processes, right? There's the process of trying to get, get accountability by the council. And what I'm referencing here are residents who by and large have felt that they're not winning with this council that ultimately had to be dissolved. And they have been at the forefront of challenging the unconstitutionality, not just of the lack of services, but of just how this municipality was doing its work. And what I'm saying to you is that by and large, that has left political parties out of the space because we now have the formation of the Makana Citizens Front, which is some of the community leaders from different areas that are contesting these elections. What does yeah. that say about the options of political parties, not just for the DA, but I'm going to put the same question to the EFF and the ANC. Where does this leave you? Because ultimately, it is also an, indica an indication of the fact that perhaps the residents don't believe that opposition parties right now are the answer well as i said in my opening remarks take a look at the track record of the da where we do govern we took over coho municipality in 2016 after i think it was about 15 years of anc government uh 15 years where it had been run into the ground by the anc left bankrupt left uh, with no services being delivered and and really really uh, uh in a poor state of affairs. And in five years, we've turned that around to being one of the top performing municipalities in the country, ranked number nine in uh, Newsroom Africa's uh, out of order index this last week. So that's, that's the kind of example where good governance can deliver. Now, the problem is, and, and you're quite right, that, that citizens are seeing that council is not delivering. The issue is, are they going to be able to change that from within? So having the Makana Citizens Front in council, is that going to change things uh, radically? And um, is, is the ANC going to change its tune just because another organization is sitting in council? I don't think the ANC changes its spots. I think the ANC is corrupt from top to bottom. I think right. the ANC is dysfunctional from top to bottom. And I think it's the ANC that must go. All right. Sack ANC. Uh, all right. All right, Kevin. Uh, and Dada Rami, let me come to you and give you an opportunity to weigh in. The same question that I've asked um, in terms of residents taking matters into their own hands, leaving political parties on the periphery, and really driving the change that they want to see in Makana. 
Thank you. You, you know, from what I've just said in the two minutes that you've given me, I felt that I must stipulate the progress that has been done by the ANC-led municipality, where project has been done in order to improve the lives of the people of Makanda. And I wouldn't really want to dwell on what Kevin has said. In the first place, Kevin doesn't belong to the local council. The mere fact that he wouldn't want one of his as colleagues from the local uh, council to represent DA in this conversation, it means that he, he really doubts their integrity. So why would Not at then all. ANC... Look, if uh, I don't want you to, to comment when I'm talking, um, uh, Kevin, was I kept quiet when you're talking. The mere fact that you are from not from the local level sphere, but you felt that because you doubt the integrity of your counterparts, the counterparts in the in the council, it shows that really you 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 respect the integrity of the African National Congress, that is the party that leads this municipality. What and you are still uh, Kevin, that. Kevin, I'm going to ask you to please try and allow the official to make his responses. We did give you ample opportunity to weigh in. Maybe you can mute yourself um, if, if you're not going to be unable to disturb what he needs to say in response to your comments. And, and, and secondly, the issue that he has quoted about the, the sewer at Ali State. Look, myself and the director has been there, and we, we hired the hydroplast in order to ensure that that, uh, that uh, sewer is being addressed there then we are going to come back, go back and monitor and, and see if the job has been done properly. But we have attended to that issue at Alistair, whereby we hired the hydroplast and ensure that that is being addressed. Now, uh, all this, we have got the plans in place, as I've highlighted that all the projects, look, if you talk about the issue of water, we don't want to, people to comment out of knowledge when we're talking about the issue of water, but the mere fact that what would, the residents don't get water daily. One, it's the drought that has been experienced in the entire country, not in the municipality only. And that has made us to have our dams that dam that support the, the West Grahamstown Makanda West. That is the housing sport dam. Mr. Rami, Mr. Rami, the reality is yes. that the reality is that yes, there were issues of drought that made yes. the water situation in Makana worse than what it should have been but you can't avoid you can't avoid the fact that a huge contributing factor to why residents find themselves in the position they that they're in today is due to a failure of the delivery of services that is part of what a court order has, has found that is uncontested it's part of the reason why you have citizens that are saying actually we're more willing to support a movement by residents than we are to support some of the political parties. How much of that will be true remains to be seen on November the 1st. But there's no denial of the fact that there's been more than inadequate service delivery. Look, what I'm saying, in all the issues that have been raised, as the municipality, we've got a plan that shows that we're attending to that. You, you know, you cut me off when I was talking about the issue of water. Currently, we're spending 137 million in upgrading the Divine Dane's Clean Hands Water Treatment Plant, whereby we are able now to supply both the Makanda East and Makanda West with the water that comes from the Goddard's Hill Reservoir. So it shows that at least there's a much progress that has been done by the municipality, because currently we are saying for us to be able to address that, we need to provide the entire Makanda with 20 megalitres of water per day. And currently, that's not the, uh, the situation, but with the upgrading that is taking place at Dane's Clay and Water Treatment Plant, the timeline of that, it says by March 2022, All right. address. All right. Let me so bring in, uh, sure, sure, let, let me bring in Sam Tanda here to also give us her view and weigh yeah. in on behalf of the EFF. Sam Tanda? Now, firstly, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Konza, when he is talking about the municipality, uh, 
when he's talking about the municipality trying to make means to deliver services, uh, when he's referring that there's been drought. So, Mr. Kong, what happened to the 850,000 rents that was availed to install tabs to informal settlements, Emma Tembeni, Emma Zulani, Emma Pakamani, Gwanzegandoniglamani, from currently what we know is that there were no taps installed, right? Those residents are still without water today. So provision was made. But under the ANC corrupt uh, government in Makana, those that money never fulfilled its mission. What happened to it? Do those residents have water? Mm -hmm. What happened to the 850,000 that was that was uh, availed for the provisions of, of tabs, for installing tabs to those informal settlements? May I respond? Yes, you may. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe my, my, my dear colleague uh, doesn't read the council agendas properly. There, there is a report that shows that there were a uh, Tabs that were installed at Enkanini, tabs that were installed at Ezolani, tabs that were installed. We are not talking about the four tabs that were put in different places per household, tabs that were supposed to go at Tembeni, tabs that were supposed to be in installed per household in Emma Papaman, Emma Zolani. Are, are the tabs installed there in Emma Papaman, Emma Zolani? I, I, I want you to reduce this to four tabs, but the mere fact that you know that there are tabs no, that were being... No, you cannot come and, and give us a, a view of just a few tabs, just three tabs that was in, installed with Gona Ezitile. That money was made to, to put tabs in households in the area in the areas I am talking about, but it's fine. Sisi uh, also hosted you today. You know, we cannot run away from the fact that when when, they, when there's a, a formation of a new political party, when we're talking about uh, this formation, uh, those leaders who felt that it was okay for them not to be part of the political spaces that are available to form something else, as so was mentioned in Yabu, EFF was present. EFF has held EE protests that that were, were going to the municipality that were advocating for a better service delivery of Abashali Basenganini, that were advocating for services that Abashali that are under Makana municipality. Now, when we're talking of Impakamo Yabashali, uh, those leaders that are leading those MCFs, these new pol political parties in Makana, we are talking about leaders who have a corrupt background from the ANC, those are rejects of the ANC. They are leaders that you, you would see them in different, in different political parties each election year. We're talking about leaders that, that were the faces of the SRWP Workers' Party that was there in 2019. We are talking about leaders that are coming, former councillors that are coming from the ANC that have been in the council for more than two terms. All right. That are the faces of the new political parties. So I, you, you, one would ask, what are they bringing that is differently? other than misusing the agenda of innocent residents that are advocating for a genuine cause. All right. The EFF was part of those matches. We, we were also in the forefront, but we couldn't take the spot of Abashali standing up for what they believe was right. Sam Tanda, I'm going to have to pause you there. Unfortunately, we've run out of time for this conversation, so I'm going to give each of you a minute just to give us your closing remarks. Kevin, let me come back to you. Uh, your minute starts now. Thank you. I think the, the thing that has been demonstrated over and over again is that the ANC have run Makana into the ground. They haven't delivered services. They haven't delivered to the residents. And now they are facing the election of a lifetime. And the DA, by contrast, has a track record of great governance. Yes, there are things that we need to do. Yes, there are places where we need to improve. But you know what? Go and look at our track record and then tell me that we still don't deliver, that we are corrupt, because we're not. The DA gets things done, not like the ANC. And I'm going to throw a couple of examples at, at, at the councillor. The first one, the town halls in Alistair that were burnt down in 2015, which were paid out. The council was paid out for them, still stand there, burnt to the ground. That's one example. A second example, those sewers, they're still overflowing. The, the sewerage where, where a young man died a couple of weeks ago, and, and I'm sorry to do this, and, and my condolences go out to his family. 
Yes, those holes have been filled in, but uh, not even 50 meters Kevin, across the road. Your There's another is great up. big hole with water in. You, it's you, time you, to change the up, ANC Kevin, government. Let's leave, a, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Mr. Rami, your minute starts now. Uh, I want to say to the uh, residents of Makanda, come first of uh, November, you must all in numbers go and vote, vote for the ANC. The organization that has taken you out of Egypt and brought you to Canaan. And also, we are happy that the, the people who are supposed, or the parties that are supposed to be oppositions, they don't do their work in the council, but the issues that they're debating now in the public. How are those issues our way to give it, it's it's Tanda, give him a chance to finish, please. Pro, pro, protect me, protect me. I'm saying both parties seemingly, they, they are representatives in the council, definitely they don't have the capacity to de discuss and debate issues within the council whereby the ANC-led council... Oh, you call the cops to take the council okay, down. Okay, guys, oh, okay, no, this is really unacceptable. They, they yeah. ground rules for this conversation that we laid out in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you were given opportunity to make your one-minute closing remarks uninterrupted. Sam Tanda, I'm also going to ask you, in the same way that you'll be afforded okay. a minute, allow Mr. Rami his minute to make his closing remarks. Mr. Rami, I'm going to start the clock for you from scratch. Your one minute starts now. Hopefully, it will be without interference. Thank you for thank you for protecting me from the, from these howlers. And as I've said, I order both, order both parties. Both parties should field quality candidates within the council that would be able to debate the issues within the council as opposition parties, not for them to go out in streets. The mere fact that they they can't vote by leading the marches, yet they've got ample time to discuss the issues within the council whereby resolutions are being taken. So I'm saying to the residents of Makanda, go out in numbers and vote for African National Congress because you can see that service delivery has been done and currently we've already spent more than 700 million on all these issues that are form part of the service delivery within Makanda. Go out all in numbers and vote ANC on the 1st of November. Amanda! All right, Sam Tanda, let me come to you, give you the final word here. Your minute starts now. It's a disgrace for the ANC to come to our televisions and talk about going out and vote where they have failed Abashali Basekhini. Here we are talking about the same ANC that stole 850,000 to install TEPS. We are talking about the ANC that has gone stole 24 million that was supposed to build the facilities that were going to develop the youth. People of Makana must use their only one bullet, their only one gun that they have, which is on the 1st of November, to go out in numbers and vote out the ANC corrupt government. The ANC corrupt government that, that does not care about the interests of Makana residents but care for themselves. They must vote for EFF. A new government, a government that prioritizes the, the leadership of youth people, a government that prioritizes who only care about developing themselves. So they must go out in numbers and teach ANC a one lesson. All right, one lesson your minute is, is vote up. out to the ANC. Your minute vote is EFF. up, Sam Thank Tanda. You. <laughs> Thank you, Sam Thank you. All right. Good night to all of you. Thanks for being part of the conversation. That's where we'll leave it. So that's the state of affairs in the Makana municipality.